This happened during one of the biggest storms of the year. My wife Rachel and I were at home watching something on Netflix when I heard the doorbell ring. It was odd, considering the weather was so bad that no sane person would be out in it. I paused the show and went to answer the door, thinking it might be an emergency. The moment I opened the door, a gust of wind and rain rushed in, making me stagger back. There was no one there. Confused, I stepped out onto the porch, the rain pelting down on me, but still saw no one. As I was about to turn back inside, a flash of lightning illuminated the street, and I saw a figure standing at the end of our driveway. It was a woman, her long hair and dress billowing in the wind, her face obscured by the darkness. She seemed to be staring right at me. I felt a chill run down my spine and quickly shut the door, locking it. Who was it? Rachel asked, pausing the show again. No one, I replied, trying to shake off the eerie feeling. Just the wind playing tricks. We resumed watching our show, but I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Every time there was a flash of lightning, I glanced towards the window, half expecting to see the woman standing there. Later that night, after Rachel had gone to bed, I heard a soft knock at the door. I ignored it, telling myself it was just the wind, but then I heard it again, louder this time. I went to the door, my heart pounding in my chest. I didn't want to open it, but I felt compelled to. As I reached for the handle, the knocking stopped. I hesitated for a moment before slowly opening the door. There was no one there, but as I looked down, I saw a single black rose lying on the welcome mat. I slammed the door shut, my mind racing. Who was leaving these things, and why? The next day, the storm had passed, and I tried to put the strange events out of my mind. But when I went to take out the trash, I found another black rose, this time on the lid of the trash can. I started noticing more and more black roses around the house, each one sending a shiver down my spine. I tried to tell Rachel, but she just laughed it off, saying it was probably just a prank. But I knew it was more than that. The roses were a warning, a sign that something sinister was coming for us. One night, as we were getting ready for bed, I heard a loud crash from downstairs. I ran down to find the front door wide open, the wind howling through the house. I quickly shut the door, but as I turned around, I saw her. The woman from the storm, standing at the top of the stairs, her eyes burning with fury. She let out the most blood-curdling scream and lunged at me, her long, sharp nails clawing at my face. I woke up in a cold sweat, my heart racing. It was just a dream, I told myself. But as I looked around the room, I saw it. A single black rose, lying on my pillow. My junior year in high school, my friends and I decided to pull what we thought would be an epic prank. Little did we know exactly what was about to ensue. It was a stormy night, the kind where the sky is an angry shade of grey and the wind howls like a banshee. We huddled in the basement of our friend's house, the one with the sprawling backyard that backed up to the woods. Our plan was simple, sneak out after dark, set up a fake crime scene in the woods, and then call the cops anonymously. We thought it would be hilarious, a story to tell for years to come. As we gathered our props, a few old clothes, some fake blood, and a broken mannequin, the storm intensified. The power flickered and then went out, plunging us into darkness. We should have taken it as a sign, but we were too caught up in our excitement. We waited until the storm seemed to calm a bit before sneaking out. The air was thick with humidity, and the ground was slick with mud. As we stumbled through the woods, the trees groaned and creaked around us. We set up our scene quickly, scattering the clothes and dousing them with fake blood. The mannequin, its head hanging at an unnatural angle, looked eerily realistic. At one point we stepped back to admire our handiwork, feeling a thrill of excitement. That's when the lightning struck. It was so close we could feel the heat of it, and the thunder was deafening. Then in the flash of light, I saw something move in the woods, something large and shadowy. Panic set in. We ran, tripping over roots and slipping in the mud. The wind whipped at our faces, and the rain stung our eyes. We didn't stop until we were back in the basement, panting and shivering. We never called the cops. We never even spoke about what happened that night. But sometimes, when the wind howls and the thunder rolls, I think about that shadowy figure in the woods. And I wonder if our prank wasn't so harmless after all. Me and my friend Tristan were having a retro gaming night in his apartment, playing games on his old N64 and eating the pizza we got delivered. 
The rain had been pouring down all evening, but we were cozy inside, the sound of the storm a distant rumble outside. We were deep into a game of Mario Kart when there was a loud crack of thunder that made us both jump. Tristan paused the game and we looked out the window. The sky was a sickly green color and the rain was coming down in sheets. That's not good, Tristan muttered. I felt a chill run down my spine. What do you mean? That's a tornado sky, Tristan said, his voice tight. We need to get to the basement. We grabbed our phones and ran down the stairs to the basement. Tristan pulled out a flashlight and we huddled together in the corner. The wind howled outside and the rain beat against the windows. Then there was a loud crash and the power went out. The basement was pitch black and I could hear Tristan's rapid breathing next to me. Tristan, I whispered. I'm here, he said, his voice shaking. We waited in the dark, listening to the storm rage outside. It felt like hours, but it was probably only minutes. Then, the wind started to die down, and the rain slowed to a drizzle. Tristan turned on his flashlight, and we cautiously made our way upstairs. The apartment was a mess, with broken glass and overturned furniture, but we were at least safe. We stepped outside, and I gasped. The sky was a clear blue, as if the storm had never even happened. But the destruction it left behind told a different story. Tristan and I looked at each other, and I knew that neither of us would ever forget that night. You ever have that feeling that somebody's watching you? You know, that eerie sensation that prickles the hairs on the back of your neck and sends shivers down your spine? That's exactly how I felt as the thunderstorm rolled in that night. It was a dark and stormy night, the kind that makes you want to curl up under a blanket with a hot cup of cocoa and a good book. But not me. I was out on the porch, watching the storm roll in, feeling more and more uneasy with every flash of lightning and rumble of thunder. As the wind picked up and the rain started to fall, I felt like I was being watched. I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something out there in the darkness, something sinister, something waiting for me. I tried to ignore it, telling myself it was just my imagination running wild. But as the storm grew more intense, the feeling only grew stronger. I could feel it in my bones, a cold dread creeping over me. And then, as a bolt of lightning lit up the sky, I saw it. A dark figure, standing at the edge of the woods, watching me. I couldn't make out any details, just a vague shape, but I knew it was there, watching and waiting. My heart was pounding in my chest as I stumbled back into the house, slamming the door shut behind me. I tried to tell myself it was just a trick of the light, a shadow or a tree branch, but deep down I knew it was something more. As the storm raged on outside, I huddled under a blanket, trying to convince myself that I was safe but I couldn't shake the feeling that whatever was out there was still watching, waiting for me to let my guard down. And then, just as suddenly as it had come, the storm passed. The rain stopped, the wind died down, and the world was quiet once more. But as I stepped out onto the porch to survey the damage, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. That's when I saw it again, the dark figure, standing at the edge of the woods. But this time, it was closer. And this time, I could see its eyes, glowing red in the darkness. I ran back inside, slamming the door shut and locking it tight. But as I lay in bed that night, I couldn't shake the feeling that it was still out there, watching and waiting for me to make a mistake. And that's when I realized that the real storm wasn't the one that had passed, but the one that was still brewing inside me. It was a storm of fear and paranoia that would haunt me for the rest of my life. One night back in college, I was inside relaxing and watching one of my favorite streamers, Bangera, while a storm raged outside. The wind howled and the rain beat against the windows with an intensity that made me grateful to be indoors. I had the lights dimmed, creating a cozy atmosphere as I settled in to enjoy the stream. Suddenly, a loud crack of thunder shook the walls, causing me to jump. I laughed at myself for being startled, but the storm seemed to be getting worse by the minute. I paused the stream and walked over to the window, peering out into the darkness. The sky was an angry, swirling mass of dark clouds, illuminated every few seconds by flashes of lightning. As I watched, a bolt of lightning struck a tree just outside my window. The sound was deafening, and the tree split in half with a deafening crack. I gasped and stepped back, my heart racing. I had never seen a storm this violent before. I decided to go check on my roommate, who was studying in her room. 
I knocked on her door, but there was no answer. I called out her name, but still nothing. I slowly opened the door, my heart pounding in my chest. The room was empty. Here is where I started to panic. Where could she have gone? I ran back to my room and grabbed my phone, dialing her number. It went straight to voicemail. I left a frantic message, begging her to call me back. As I hung up, the lights flickered and then went out, plunging the room into darkness. I fumbled for my phone, using the flashlight to guide me as I made my way back to the window. The storm was still raging, and I could see a tree that had been struck by lightning and was now on fire, the flames licking at the branches. I heard a loud bang from somewhere in the house, and my heart leapt into my throat. I started to call out for my roommate again, but my voice was drowned out by the howling wind and the sound of the rain. Suddenly I heard a noise behind me. I whirled around, my flashlight illuminating the room. There was no one there. I took a deep breath, trying to calm my racing heart. I was just being paranoid, I told myself. There was nothing to be afraid of. But as I turned back to the window, I saw something that made my blood run cold. A figure was standing outside, just beyond the tree line. It was tall and thin, with long, spindly limbs. I couldn't make out any details, but I could feel its eyes on me. I screamed and stumbled back, dropping my phone. The flashlight went out, plunging the room into darkness once again. I scrambled to find my phone, my hands shaking as I searched the floor. When I finally found it, I turned the flashlight back on and aimed it at the window. The figure was gone. I breathed a sigh of relief, but it was short-lived. The lights flickered back on, and I heard a voice behind me. What are you doing? It was my roommate, standing in the doorway with a confused look on her face. I was just in the bathroom. Why are you screaming? I tried to explain, but the words wouldn't come out. I just pointed at the window, but there was nothing there. The storm had passed, and the tree was no longer on fire. It was as if nothing had even happened. Even so, I still couldn't shake the feeling that something had been there, watching me. And I knew that I would never forget that night, no matter how hard I tried. <laughs>